Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams with you, and today I've got Chebyshev's Theorem. We're going to use Chebyshev's Theorem to solve for an unknown value of the standard deviation when we do not have normal distribution. So let's just revisit the theorem real quick. Remember, Chebyshev's gives us the minimum proportion of the data that will fall within k standard deviations of the mean. And this is regardless of the shape of the distribution. It's important to remember that k represents the number of standard deviations from the mean. And the way that we're going to find this is by employing his theorem, which is 1 minus 1 over k squared. And we can use this theorem so long as k, the number of standard deviations we're solving for, is greater than 1. So let's see what we have. So we have the average price of a concert ticket at $125. But what we know is that depending upon when tickets are purchased, the price can vary. We do have data that tells us that 65% of the tickets for this concert sold for between $82.75 and $167.50. The shape of the distribution of ticket prices is unknown, and what we want to find is the value of the standard deviation. In other words, we want to know how much or how big, how many dollars, sigma is. And so this is our unknown. So I think it's always helpful for us to figure out what we do know and kind of get a visual of that. So we were given that the mean price of the ticket was $125. We were told that 65% of them sold for between $167.25 and that on the bottom we had $82.75. Oops, there's my... Point. And so what we know is between that point and that point on the curve, we have 65% of the data. At this point, the other thing I can figure out is that from this lower side of the interval to the mean, if I subtract the 82.75 from the 125, I know that from here to here, I have $42.25. And this is going to become important when we've solved for K. And so I also know that from here to here is that same $42.25. So we'll come back to this value in just a few minutes. The other thing that we know is that 1 minus 1 over K squared is going to solve to give us 0.65. What we're after is this value of K right here. So I'm going to do some annoying algebra to get you that answer. So here I am back with my blank screen and my algebra problem. We were given 1 minus 1 over K squared equals 0.65. And what I want to do is I'm going to solve for K. Now, a warning. I'm going to do this the long way. Um, if you're great at skipping steps, then be my guest. Skip steps. But in the meantime, I'm working it out step by step. So I'm going to subtract one from both sides in order to start isolating my value of K. And I'm going to cheat because I'm just going to ignore the negatives because there's no such thing as a negative quantity of data under the curve. So now I'm down to 1 divided by k squared is 0.35. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my k squared over. And it's going to cancel out nicely on this side. And it's going to leave me with 1 equal to 0.35k squared. Remember, I'm after k, 
So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And I know that the square root of 1 is 1, so that's going to give me 1 equal to the square root of 0.35 is, I'm going to take it four decimal places, is 0.5916K. So I've almost got K by itself. The last thing I've got to do is I've got to divide that 0.5916 out so that I can get K all by itself. So this one's going to cancel. This piece of math right here is going to give me 1.69 equals K. So now what I know is that interval that contains 65% of the data requires me to move plus and minus 1.69 standard deviations from the mean. Remember I told you that that $42.25 was going to be important? This is the point where that $42.25 comes into play. All right, so we're going to go back to our original diagram right, where we knew that the mean was $125. We knew that we had an upper limit on this interval of 167.25, a lower part um, location of our interval at 82.75, and we knew that it covered $42.25. Well, now I know that K was equal to 1.69. So what that tells me is that between this point and this point on the curve, I moved 1.69 standard deviations. Well, if I moved 1.69 standard deviations and that covered a distance on the curve of $42.25, if I take the distance that I moved and I divide it by the number of standard deviations required to move that distance. Now what I know is that the value of my standard deviation is $24.99.556. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to round that off to a nice round $25. So how do I know if I'm right? Well, between the mean and this point here, I moved 1.69 standard deviations. If I take 1.69 standard deviations times a value of $25, and I add it to the mean of 125, guess what that gives me? 167.25. So using the distance traveled and the number of standard deviations we had to move in order to travel that distance, we're able to now know that the standard deviation of these ticket prices is $25, even though we do not have normal distribution. I hope this helps. Um, I hope that all of your problems solve this easily and have a great day.